Next thing on the agenda for the Optimus Sport is to mount this uh, CNC motor mount. This is a uh, RC Metal Bits motor mount for a uh, Ryzen Hour gearbox. And it's a 30 millimeter diameter. And the nose on the Optimus on this one came cut to about 28 millimeters, so I've simply measured back to where I get 30 millimeters and marked that with tape. So I'm going to have to cut about 5 millimeters off the uh, front of the nose. And I just used uh, some calipers to um, get the 30 millimeters and figure out where I needed to cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this with the Dremel and then I'll, I'm going to prep this to bond it inside the fuselage. I cut back the uh, nose uh, with the Dremel and then just uh, I got it close to the line with the Dremel and then just uh, used a sanding block to uh, hand sand it to get it nice and uh, flush. And then I've done some prep work on the uh, motor mount. I've actually scuffed up the edges with some uh, coarse sandpaper and I put some notches uh, around it. It's, the camera's not really focusing, but I put some notches around it with a cutoff wheel um, just to help the uh, epoxy uh, bite into the metal. And I also have here a little bit of carbon toe. And I'm actually going to wrap that around in the grooves of the uh, CNC motor mount before I mount it. And that'll just help um, not like uh, key it into the fuselage so I know it'll never come out. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this with the carbon and prep the epoxy and then get this thing installed. Alright, I have the carbon toe wrapped around the uh, motor mount and I've um, saturated that carbon with um, just straight epoxy. And then inside the fuselage I have some epoxy that's thickened with uh, cabosil. And all I'm going to do is just uh, slip this into the fuselage and then uh, clean up any excess epoxy that might ooze out and then I'm going to tape it in place and set it aside and let it cure. Alright here we go, the firewall or the uh, CNC motor mount is installed and it's taped in place and all I gotta do is let this cure. Uh, I don't know if you can see down here but I got a really good um, bond. So I'm just gonna set that aside and let that cure. This is what the uh, wire harness looks like at the end of the center panel. It's just a uh, like Futaba J style connector and it just floats out of the, in this hole so what I'm gonna do to keep this from um, potentially falling back into the center panel when you take the model apart and just to make it easier to put together I'm gonna make a small plywood uh, plate that fits in here and it has a uh, slot to accept uh, this uh, connector and I'm just gonna epoxy that in place and I've already done it to the uh, other, other side of the uh, center panel, so I'll show you what that looks like. So here's what it looks like uh, when it's finished. Um, the resin's still curing and I have a connector slipped in there just to give me something to hold on to when I was mounting it. And it's a pretty tight fit, and all that is just uh, epoxied in. So I'll do the other side and then let everything cure up. All right, I have made up the uh, fuselage side wiring harness. I didn't end up using the supplied wiring harness because um, the standard DB9 plug with uh, the wire coming in um, straight from the bottom and shrink tubing it was too tall and basically when you tried to um, install the plug into the wing it would get into the servo here so what I've done is soldered the wires on flat and I've used just some sealant to cover everything up instead of shrink tubing and to hold the wire um, flat like this and then I just have some regular servo wire and at the ends here we have the connectors and they're labeled. So yeah, if you install your servos like this, um, you really can't use the supplied harness. Um, I don't know how else you would install the servos. Maybe you could lay them down. Maybe they'd fit that way and you'd get more uh, clearance. But uh, I found this just to be the easiest solution. So this will get um, threaded through the um, 
the fuselage. The receiver is going to sit right about here. I have the motor installed, uh, prop and spinner. We have uh, Altus, a uh, speed control, and then I just have a uh, flat piece of balsa here. I sanded one side round to match the contour of the fuselage. I glued the balsa in and put Velcro all on top. So it's just a flat, flat base for the um, battery to sit on. Okay, some of the components I've used. Um, I have a uh, 10 shock uh, 1515 motor. It's a 15 turn with a Ryzen Hour 5 to 1 Micro Edition gearbox. It's an awesome motor and an awesome gearbox. Uh, Talon 60 speed control. I like the Talon 60 because it has an adjustable um, BEC output of 6 to 8 volts and the the BEC is uh, 10 amps I think so it's uh, oh it's a 20, 20 amp uh, peak and 8 amp continuous so it's plenty strong for the um, servos I used a Vita 1495 prop and Altus V4 Plus um, I haven't really put any of the stuff away neatly because I'm just handing this off to the customer and he's going to install his receiver and run his wires outside of the, uh, his, run his antennas outside of the fuselage. So I'm going to let him do the final kind of tucking away of everything and getting everything installed nice and neat. I did do a CG test with a uh, 800 milliamp 3S battery. So we have a uh, 100 gram motor. I think the speed control is like uh, 50 grams or so, 60 grams. And then, you know, we have um, the Altus and a receiver and all that. And with this setup, the way I built the model uh, puts the CG at 113, which is pretty spot on. So we can leave that there. So it came out pretty good. Uh, the total, total all up weight on this guy is 50 ounces. And uh, I didn't really make any efforts to save weight, so you could definitely shed a few ounces off the model if you use some lighter gear, lighter servos, etc. Shortened up some of the wires and things like that. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I found that the tail is really easy to um, assemble. You know, you just uh, put the elevator on with the screws, run the screw in for the uh, control horn, and then all you got to do is to do is slip the rudder on and just snap on that ball link right there. And uh, to get the ball link off, there's a uh, hole. I'll show you. I'll show you guys how that works. Okay, to remove the um, ball link, there's actually a hole drilled through the plastic link, and you, you just get a piece of uh, you know music wire or maybe an Allen wrench, and you just put it in the hole. And then you can just pop the ball link off. As you can see, it's it's already loose, so it makes um, removing the uh, tail pieces go pretty quickly for transportation. So that's gonna wrap up the uh, build on this guy. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get a chance to fly this. Hopefully, I will. Uh, I'm gonna hand it off to the customer, and he can get his uh, receiver in here and uh, get it programmed. And then afterwards, uh, hopefully, he'll give me an uh, opportunity to fly it, and we can uh, film it, and I can see how it goes. But uh, thanks for watching this, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you guys in the next one, and maybe we'll get a chance to actually uh, get some stick time on this thing. So I'll catch you guys later.